Hello, I've been playing about today with um, measuring distortion on an audio signal. That's um, now really, I've, I've, I'm doing that really, I'm not actually building an audio circuit. I just wanted to have a look at a couple of pieces of equipment that I've got. Something I've had for quite a long time, which is a HP um, 339A distortion analyzer. It's quite a big unit, and I'll show you that in a minute. And uh, I recently uh, bought a Keithley um, 2015THD which is a six and a half digit um, benchtop multimeter but has a distortion analyzer built into it, which, uh, which I think is really useful. Now from a space point of view, the Keithley is a much better unit. So what I figured I'd do was try out both, um, both uh, units, uh, make sure I'm getting similar results and then probably uh, get shot off the HP um, 339A because it's physically quite a big unit. Um, anyway, what I thought I'd do before I do that is just go through uh, a very basic um, theory and um, block diagram around how you measure distortion. For those of you that, uh, that are not aware of this, I'm, I'm sure it's, uh, it's well known by, by many. And uh, my understanding is only actually quite rudimentary. So if I get anything wrong, then uh, I should declare that right now that I'm, not, I'm no expert here. I've got the, the basics. Anyway, I thought I'd, I'd um, describe the basics as best I can. Um, so for anyone that, that perhaps doesn't understand this as well as they, uh, they would want to, this might help them along the way. So the first thing to know about um, distortion is actually um, there are many different types of uh, distortion. I'm um, covering a couple of them here, but uh, in, in effect they, um, they fall into two sort of primary categories, I suppose. Uh, one is uh, distortion that's, uh, that's created as a result of uh, non-linearity. Now, whether that be, um, you know, not normally, normally caused, um, you know, where, where the ampli amplitude is affected. And the obvious one here, not, not drawn so well by me, I'm afraid, is that of clipping. That's where the output of the circuit or the device that you're using um, reaches its its headroom. It, you know, doesn't have enough headroom, so it basically clips. And that that should that should have been um, you know around a, a the top there. It's got a flat top and a flat bottom. And that's very common. So if you overdrive an amplifier, for example, an audio amplifier, you'll see um, you'll see that effect. So that that causes. Um, uh, distortion. Uh, another type of distortion, non-linear, is where where the signal is affected in the time domain. So where where you're taking a measurement and it's expecting a pure sine wave. If uh, you know if the falling edge falls off a lot quicker than you expect, or the rising edge rises a lot slower than you would expect, or some other shape like that, then you'll kind of get phase phase distortion. You'll get a, a time domain based distortion. Um, a very common one um, that you'll see is this uh, crossover distortion. This is, this is often seen in audio amplifiers, particularly a Class AB amplifier, and we've, we've got a sample here which is what I'm using to do some basic tests, and you'll see uh, that in a moment. Um, but this is, this is where you've got um, you know, the, the push-pull side of a, of a Class, uh, the, push, the push and the pull side of a Class AB amplifier, or a Class B amplifier actually. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a gap, a switchover. Normally this is caused by um, Imbalance the way the way the output devices are, are biased and turned on, um, so so you get this kind of shape waveform. Now, on an oscilloscope, that actually looks quite harmless. But the the actual effect of changing the waveform in this way is you end up with very fast transients, and these transients create other fre frequencies, and then you start generating a thing called harmonic distortion. We'll talk about that a little bit in a second, or at least we can demonstrate it and see it. Um, so there's lots of different types of distortion. Uh, I'm, I've used three uh, examples here. Now the one thing to note is that you'll often find on hi-fi equipment or audio equipment, um, manufacturers will often quote, often quote a THD value, total harmonic distortion. And um, the only thing I can tell you about total harmonic distortion is a figure in isolation um, doesn't really mean anything. So something that's got very, very low distortion at one frequency could mean that it has very, very poor distortion figures at other frequencies. So typically, um, the, the, the common parameter is the bandwidth, so that, you'll often see that's 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz uh, with a total harmonic distortion um, value. And that really, if the manufacturer is doing the right thing, probably ought to be um, quoting the peak, you know, the, 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 most, the, the most it sees across that range. Often it will be the average. Um, Sometimes I think it's just made up, to be honest with you. But um, that's um, that, that's so. So bear that in mind with total harmonic distortion. When you see it as a as a figure in isolation, it doesn't mean very much. You've got to look at see how that's tested. And as I say, the most common way is by testing it across um, a frequency uh, bandwidth of uh, twenty kilo uh, twenty hertz to twenty kilohertz is the common one. 
Okay, so so how do we measure this then? So how do how do we determine um, if a, if a device that we've created? I'm, I'm going to use this as an example here. It's very very simple two transistor push ball uh, amplifier circuit. Um, this is as it happens a current amplifier because there's no voltage gain in here. But um, how does it? Um, how do we measure? distortion. Well there's two ways of doing it, the, the old tried and tested way which is still used uh, very very com commonly and uh, I've got a device here which does that, um, is really as simple as this, you generate a known good high quality sine wave um, at, a, at, a, at a given frequency and let's say for example this is at one kilohertz here. Um, you, push, you put that through the device under test and you get the output and then you feed that through a very narrow bandpass filter um, which would um, allow everything except the fundamental frequency that you feed in. So what comes out of here is a signal level that's equal to everything coming out of here, ex excluding the frequency that's being the fundamental the, the signal that's being passed in. So it effectively, filters out that fundamental frequency. So by definition, if you subtract subtract the input signal, assuming there's no gain here. Uh, just for the purpose of understanding this, uh, if you subtract the input signal, the intended input signal, that is the sine wave, from the output, whatever's left is, by definition, it's your distortion. Uh, now, that's not actually entirely true. It's a, it's a combination of t uh, distortion and noise. But just for the for the focus of the uh, for the purpose of the exercise, let's just assume uh, that there is no noise. It's an ideal uh, circuit with no noise. Uh, then you've got. Every, whatever it contains is everything except for the fundamental frequency. That gives you a measure of distortions. That's a very common way of doing it. Now, to make this work, basically you either have to have 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 something that um, uh, this in, signal source and this notch filter are, are bound together, you know, implicitly bound together, and that's that in itself is quite hard to do in keeping calibrate uh, in calibration. And that's actually what this HP. Um, 339 that I've got here does and we'll look at that in a second. Uh, another way to do it is you have these two things separately and you have a progressive um, way of um, setting switches on the front of the unit or, or tuning, um, basically nulling out uh, by tuning this filter to this fundamental. So you, you get this, set, set your input frequency, your fundamental frequency, you tune your filter to an approximate, then you get into finer control and you tune it a bit finer and you effectively keep on nulling out that signal until you get to the lowest you possibly can get on the output here and, but, and then the lowest you can possibly get, assuming this circuit and this um, signal source are of good quality, should be a representation of your noise. That's, that's how it's commonly done. Um, in more modern uh, equipment, I, you know, there's all, obviously numerous ways of doing this, and, and again, this is very, very simple terms. So, uh, if anyone's going to call me out here, um, you know, please, please understand this is just a basic explanation. Um, in modern systems, uh, what tends to happen is you again, you've got the same signal source. Um, the it goes through the device under test. The output is then fed through, effectively sampled uh, using uh, normal uh, analog to digital techniques, and then an FFT algorithm is run on that data to obtain uh, the fundamental frequency plus all the all the harmonic content. Um, and then the math is car carried out on that. Just it ignores the uh, effectively in very simple terms. It ignores the the power. You know, if this is measured in dBm. Uh, in, ignores the power um, of the fundamental, and then it sums the power of all the all the um, subsequent harmonics, the second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on, uh, and that gives you an output and a representation of noise. So um, a good a good way to um, a good good way to check to see if this works uh, or to 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 observe um, distortion is to build a circuit that makes that is easy to create distortion. So that's essentially what this is. Uh, I've got this built on a breadboard down here, which we'll go through in a second. Uh, but all it is is you've got a an MPN and a PMP transistor in a classic um, push pull pair. Uh, pull up resistor here, pull down resistor here. Um, the two bases, uh, you know, in a most in a TTL circuit, for example, are just joined together, um, and uh, to, to compensate for the the silicon voltage drop across these two transistors, um, or the switch-on voltage uh, for these two transistors, you put two diodes in between here, uh, which are also silicon diodes, and that gives you the approximate volt drop to get you somewhere close. Now, normally, 
in a circuit like this, you would also have probably a low value pot either in series here or perhaps strapped across one of these here, depending on the, the bias direction of the circuit, I'm not sure. Um, and you would trim that. The other thing you have to do in these kind of circuits um, is you have to do, uh, deal with um, thermal characteristics because as, uh, as I've talked about in other uh, video um, uh, blogs before, you, um, uh, when silicon, um, the temperature of a silicon junction rises, the volt drop across it falls. Um, so if this is not set up carefully, you can very quickly get thermal runaway, and um, that that can be um, you know that can be t t typically um, qu quite significant if you're working at quite high currents here because this value will be quite low and quite a lot of current will be passing that will cause junction temperature change and so on. Anyway, for the purpose of this circuit, that doesn't really matter. I think this is drawing about 50 milliamps either side, so it's it's, it's fine. Um, and then in the base of this this transistor here, we've just got uh, I've, I've DC decoupled it of a 0.1 mic cap, and I'm feeding the input signal in. So that's the, the circuit under test. And the key thing here, which I haven't shown properly, haven't drawn there. Uh, there's a there's a link there as well. Um, so I can short out e either of these or both of them just to see the effects on the scope, and we can uh, reproduce. What we're going to aim to reproduce here is crossover distortion. Um, and then see that in varying degrees. And then I'm going to use um, both the HP339 and the um, Keithley to measure the distortion and also look at it on a scope so we can see what's happening. Okay, so this is looking at the... Um, uh, I'm using the Keithley here and I'm generating a one kilohertz signal, uh, which I'm actually feeding straight back into the uh, Keithley meter. And you can see it's measuring a total harmonic distortion value of somewhere around about uh, 0 0.0810, uh, that, that kind of value. Now, what I'm going to do, um, if you go, if you recall back on this uh, schematic here, um, this this diagram, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect the and, and currently I've got the input source going in here, and I'm also got the output source, which is going back to the Keithley uh, meter. So I'm going to move the input of the Keithley meter from here. Uh, to the output here, and you can see the the effect of the measurement. Uh, bear in mind this is a very poorly designed um, output stage. Let that stabilise. Okay, so you can see now on the um, on the Keithley meter, it's reading 1.1% um, total harmonic distortion. And um, you know that on the face of it looks quite clean, but you'll see the this is the FFT of the same signal. So you've got the one kit. This is um, a 10 kilohertz um, span I've set here. Uh, so these are one kilohertz points. So you can see the um, the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, eighth, ninth, um, and, and just there the tenth harmonics. And you can see the harmonic content is really quite high. Uh, relative. If we switch back to um, back to the input source and have a look at that, uh, you can see in order of magnitude. And bear in mind this is this is dBm, so this is a, a logarithmic um, scale here. So in order of magnitude, these are much 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 smaller. But uh, as soon as you've um, resulting a very low um, uh, distortion reading, if we um, revert back to the output of the of the um, stage, you'll see that uh, the harmonic content here is significantly higher. Um, probably worth noting here that the, uh, the th you've got the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the seventh. So if you look for the third, fifth, and seventh, um, this is an aside note really, but a lot of people talk about the sonic qualities of audio amplifiers, and especially a comparison between um, tube amplifiers and transistor amplifiers. And I, I haven't got a tube amplifier set up here. I'm going to do this exercise again uh, at some point um, with a tube amplifier. But um, you'll find that um, tube amplifiers typically, when they have harmonic content because of distortion or because of impurities in the signal through the transformers and so on, you'll find that they will naturally amplify second, fourth, sixth, eighth harmonics, the even harmonics, rather than the odd harmonics. And what happens there is when you get intermodulation distortion between those two frequencies, the additions and subtractions are more, um, are more diatonically um, uh, similar. So they tend to sound a bit sweeter, or they, you know, they sound less harsh, whereas um, odd harmonics like the first, third, fifth and seventh sound um, very dissonant and can give you, you know, quite a, a jarring sound, which is why solid state amplifiers sound really terrible when you, when you um, have distortion. 
uh, on them. Anyway, so you can see the effects there. Now what I'm going to do, uh, just to show you the, the difference, I'm going to induce more distortion by um, basically closing these two jumpers here. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to hook across, just bring these two bases. What that will introduce, oh sorry, and just before I do that actually, um, as I said, that sine wave as it looks, quite, uh, looks quite clean if you look at it there, but actually if we uh, zoom in on it, you'll actually, you can see these impurities here, that, I don't know how well we can see that, you can see some noise here, I think that's triggering noise uh, actually, rather than noise actually on the, um, on the signal, uh, but you can see these impurities here, that, that, uh, that kink, and that kink is what's constituting 1% distortion, so you can see it's quite critical, um, and the, the, the distortion measurements do require you to have quite a, quite a pure sine wave. Anyway, what I'm going to do, um, let me just bring it back down here so we can see the... Oh, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to bypass those two diodes, uh, as I say, in this, this circuit here, which what should do, it should induce this uh, crossover distortion, and then we can see the effect. So we're at 1.1% 1, 1 distortion here, um, you can see that uh, the, the harmonic content there. Now as I just bring that across... Uh... Okay, so now you can see we've got um, very, very severe uh, crossover. Uh, you can see the distortion figures up at 3, 3.5%. Uh, now, which I'm surprised it's that low, to be honest with you. That's, uh... Okay, three, three and a half percent. And if we have a look again in the time domain, uh, look at look at a broader bandwidth. Now you can see the um, the second, third, fifth harmonics are almost up at the same same level, or very very close to the fundamental. And that's a very, very distorted signal um, that we're looking at there. Okay, so that's... Um, now, the good thing about this uh, meter, just talking about the uh, Keithley meter, and I'll show you very briefly how you set this up for doing distortion measurements, because it's uh, quite a nice bit of kit. Works really well. Um, the, source, the source output is actually on the back of the meter, and that's coming, coming around on this, this cable here. Uh, and I've just got that hooked back up. Now, I haven't used a coax here, and the reason for that is... Um, the, I, I've terminated that um, feed from the back with a 50 ohm resistor. Um, now I'm using just these two fly leads because the capacitance itself has a big impact. The capacitance on this lead can have a big impact on the on the measurement. So I've just used a couple of flying leads to um, to reduce the capacitance uh, on the input here. Um, now. So setting this up is quite simple. You basically got when you when you've got um, when you're measuring harmonic distortion uh, with this. If you set the source, um, you can set it to you know, turn the sine wave on. Uh, you can see there. Then you set the frequency. So I've got that set to one kilohertz dead. Um, set the impedance to 50 ohms, which is what I've got in the output here. I've got half a volt coming out amplitude. That's half, half a volt RMS. Um, not sure what that does, and uh, there it is. It's uh, and, and that's that's the output running, and then to measure, uh, you've got total harmonic distortion, total harmonic distortion plus noise. Let's do that one. Um, now the frequency is automatic, which means it will tune itself to its own internal source, so you don't have to worry about setting the frequency. If you remember in the and the old the old method of doing it, uh, let's just sorry. Uh, the old method to do it, you'd have to set the frequency here and then tune and null this out, and we'll see that in the when I do the demo of the um, HP339 over here. Um, but in this one, it's automatic, which is really nice. Or, or you've got an option if, I, if you're using an external source, you can. Uh, it's got an acquire mode, and it will just read the input frequency, the fundamental uh, that it can determine on the, as the input frequency, and use that for its calculations. Um, and the units is percentage, which is what I'm reading, and you've got a, um, a filter which you can set. Now, I think, uh, I'm not quite sure what it's done there, let me just have a look, because it's now reading 50%, uh, which is probably about right. 
so each time you make a change, and let me just uh, let me just restore that to its cleaner point. Yeah. So when you when you measure when you take your measurement uh, once once you've got the uh, whatever you, whatever signal you set up monitoring you need to run through that measurement menu. Oh, because it's a THD plus N, I think. Let's just turn that back to THD. Yeah. Okay. So actually, THD plus N, which is probably probably what um, what's normally used for measuring. Oh, distortion. Okay, so uh, two point eight percent when the when the di or two point seven percent when the diodes are in place. If I remove one of the diodes, jumps up to twenty two percent. Let's just zoom out on there. That's actually a more, more sensible reading by the looks of it. So uh, so in normal. You can see they're almost, almost clean, a reading about 2.6%. Um, one of the diodes in place, so we've got we've got half the um, crossover distortion. Uh, it's reading 22%, and then severe crossover distortion. We've got 50%. So. Okay, so you know, have, having used this in, in the past and this, this is an awful lot. Um, more convenient, I have to. I, I, I have to tell you, um, and the reason why I bought this meter um, a few weeks ago, uh, funny enough, uh, was for exactly for this purpose. And <laughs> the one I'd actually bought that was sent to me. Fortunately, the guy, uh, a guy called Kev, really nice guy, um, the one he sent me the first one, and it wouldn't read t um, total uh, d distortion measurements. And I, I, I thought it was me not using the meter right. Anyway, I followed the manual and it turned out not to be the case. It was actually a problem with the meter and, uh, and Kev very nicely uh, made his way down here uh, as a result of another trip and uh, we met up for coffee and he gave me, uh, he gave me a replacement one. So uh, this one does actually measure uh, distortion. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just, that shows you how simple that is to set that up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and set this one up and then I'm going to try and take you through the same process and see if we can get a distortion uh, reading um, there, uh, which is in, in any way comparable. Uh, just to cross check it. So there you go. We've got um, with no with no uh, obviously no input source. Uh, sorry, with no um, device under test. Uh, the reading I'm getting is about. Uh, not quite sure why it's that low. What have I done here? That high. Sorry. Let's just go through that again. Oh, because it's uh, so using uh, total harmonic distortion about 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and let's just verify that uh, that drops because there's obviously some noise coming out of this thing, or it's probably the noise of the connectivity that I've got. You know, all the cables that I'm running here. It's not not set up really to do these kind of measurements. This was just for demonstration purposes. So if I just drop that back to yeah, so down at about 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0.18, 0.22. That's what this is sort of spec'd at anyway. Um, and then, um, but with um, the output of this mock-up, about 1.2, yeah, this is not doing a very good job at m measuring, I'm not sure, well, not, not quite sure, there you go, but this is my knowledge um, being uh, Hitting its limit there, um, 2.8, 22, 50. Okay, so if I just make a note of that. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll make a note of those, and then we'll get ourselves set up, and uh, and I'll get this thing going, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, get a comparable, a comparable set of measurements. Okay, so this is the um, 339 distortion analyzer. So what we've got here is very simple. Set it to one. Zero and one kilohertz, so that's a one kilohertz um, sine wave we've got coming out there, um, which should be in pretty good uh, shape. This is wired up. Um, this is the this is the um, output of the um, oscillator. It's set to one volt uh, output there or thereabouts. That's going to the input of the circuit. The output of the circuit is coming back out to our scope and also back to the input of the um, input of the um, uh, distortion measurement. 
Now, when you set these things up, it's really quite straightforward. This is this this is uh, quite a lot nicer than the early one. I think it's the three three four. Uh, the three three four. You basically have to null everything out. This is done. This is done for you. Um, there is a, a frequency vernier. That's on that's on the cow. Uh, and you can, you, if you see on look on the scope, I can I can tweak the frequency there. Uh, but you'll see once I let let it settle, it doesn't impact distortion measurement because the distortion meter uh, notch filter tracks exactly the frequency that's set on the um, on the um, frequency source. The only place this is useful um, is when you again like like the um, Keithley, when you use an external frequency source, you dial up the approximate frequency and then you tune in and you'll actually use this uh, to null out your measurement. So you'll you'll get to the point where you've got your measurement. Uh, and, and you'll null that out until you find the exact centre point uh, and you can measure it. But anyway, it's best obviously to use its own internal oscillator, uh, which is a very good quality oscillator. Uh, so there we go. So that's, that's with the two diodes in circuit. You can see uh, we're on the, um, uh, the distortion range of three, uh, because I'm actually measuring in um, percent uh, in this case. So this is the scale of three, and we're reading about uh, two point one five two point two on the scale there that's two point two percent now if you remember that's about right I think we're reading between one point eight and two point two percent on the Keithley um, now if I um, if I take out one of these diodes if you remember on the um, last um, on the last um, on the Keithley uh, measurement with one diode in place we were measuring about twenty two percent so if I put there you can see the meters hit the end stop so if I downrange that to ten to thirty uh, so now we're on the on the um, 30 scale here, and uh, this is telling us um, that the distortion here is about 15, 14, 13 and a half percent distortion, uh, which is a little bit lower than the um, than the Keithley was showing. That's what that's uh, showing us there. And then if I move it across and take out um, both diodes. Let's just get that in there. Um, and again, on the 30% range, we're getting distortion of about 26, 27%. Uh, and you can see uh, we're getting a similar, similar thing here as we did before. So uh, in heightened thirds, fifths, sevenths, and ninths, uh, all the odd harmonics distorting there. Um, Okay, so there's not much else I can show you. I think this this thing, um, you know, I really like this. This is a really great bit of kit. It does it does a really good job at measuring this stuff. Um, I like the stability of the analog meter. I'm not sure I like the size of it, and that's the the issue of, I've always had with this. It's physically, it's a it's a big lump. I'll probably stick this on eBay at some point. What I think I'm going to do first, I'm going to do a tear down on it because uh, this this HP uh, meter comes from. Um, you know, a really nice era of HP where they really built stuff really, really nicely. And this is uh, very, comp it's all made of aluminium, the chassis is all aluminium, and it, it's really built nicely. And um, it's very comparable to how, how they put stuff together for military use. It's really nicely built, and it's definitely worth having a tear down and having a look inside there. Okay, that's it. Um, simple measurements, uh, simple distortion measurements. Um, I, you know, I must say this is uh, by no stretch of the imagination a complete uh, demonstration of uh, measuring distortion very rudimentary 101 shows you the basics gives you a sense of um, how you can measure audio uh, uh, audio distortion and uh, you know the, the the two methods obviously I've shown you both working um, and you can see on the scope as well the the basic um, the, the, the basic principles behind it so I hope you find it useful um, if you do please give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you next time <laughs>